Hello everyone, welcome to Global Dream Makers. My name is Bailan Mejino and today in celebration of Asian American Pacific Islander Native Hawaiian Heritage Month, um, I am here with Keiki Fujita who is the founder of Color Dance and we'll tell you about that in a minute. Welcome Keiki. Thank you so much for having me here Bailan. It's an honor and a pleasure and I really love you a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love your work and I love you, of course, because your work is an expression of you. And that's why I love it so much. I mean, it's it's so vibrant, but okay. Let me tell them just a little bit about you to, as introduction, okay? So Keiki's career of color dance spans over 30 years as an accomplished artist, designer, and consultant. Her unique creations originate from Japanese kimono painting. Keiki's one-of-a-kind artwear are in collections of superstars, such as the late Elizabeth Taylor, Robert Plant of Led Zeppelin, Linda Ronstadt, Whoopi Goldberg, Mary Lou Henner, Celia Ward, and Nobu McCarthy. Her art of color encompasses an apprenticeship in Kyoto, Japan, where she learned a singularly unique kimono painting technique and style using traditional materials called Musen Yuzen. Keiki studied textile art and design and graduated in graphic design from UC Davis. She received further certification in color psychology and metaphysics from the Color Research Institute in San Francisco, as well as special training at the Mendocino Art Center studying various painting and printing methods. Her work has been shown and sold in boutiques, galleries, and in some of the most prestigious department stores throughout the United States and Japan. Keiki's work is also documented in the Obiko Artware Archive Project at the Textile Art Council at the De Young Museum, Fine Arts Museum of San Francisco. So I am absolutely honored to have you today, Keiki. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Bailan. Thank you. You know, it's, um, uh, and thank you so much for agreeing to be uh, in the Macy's um, Asian American Native Hawaiian Pacific Islander Heritage Month celebration because, you know, bringing uh, our expression, our creative expression out into the world um, through art gives us so much opportunity to interpret and to look at it and experience, you know, what is our experience of art? You know, what is this evoking within me? What is it making me think of? And you know, can you tell us a little bit about how your journey brought you to where you are now? Because this is powerful work that you do. Thank you. Well, as a child, my mother was always having us do creative projects. And so she is a, was an artist in her own right. She did everything so elegantly from food to making all of our clothes. And she was a a beautiful housekeeper everything was exquisite and I just um, was fortunate to be around such a, a loving and elegant woman actually she just it just came naturally to her so I was surrounded by beauty at, at a young age and and then I just naturally had uh, inclination towards cr creativity towards doing things with my hands. And I was always up in awe of nature, you know, butterflies and dragonflies and hummingbirds and all those plants, all those beautiful things. And we had Japanese garden. I remember playing in that little Japanese garden and just being in a wonderland. And so when I went to college, I had taken a textile design series. And at that time, a movement was happening with wearable art, one of a kind clothing. And I, and I always felt that each of us are unique and that we ought to be expressing ourselves through our clothing. I, I remember going into certain department stores and I'm thinking, well, I, th these are fine, but, but each of us are can can express ourselves uniquely that's what drew, drew, drew me to the one of a kind clothing on top of that we made all of our own clothes so my mom sewed everything for us so <clears throat> it was um something that i naturally grew up with and then wanted to share that with other people that that notion that we are all 
unique and that we can share our own expression in the world. So I fell in love with the fact that I could create my own textiles. Um, and then at that time, people were women were going to Japan to study different techniques of painting on fabric. And I thought, well, if they can do that, I can do that too. They weren't even Japanese. So I went to Japan, my dad helped me find my teacher and the place where I lived. And I ended up at a very unique uh, studio in Kyoto where I apprenticed um, and learned this intricate technique of painting kimono that my sensei, my teacher actually created himself. He is actually an oil painter, a very distinguished oil painter. And he was, he created this technique I think because he was an oil painter, the way that we uh, made, the way he designed and the way he painted and executed the uh, design was like a painting rather than the traditional way of, of painting the kimono, if, if that makes any sense. Um, so basically what we would do is we, he would, do the whole design, create the whole design on the kimono and we would paint it like a big painting. That's not how it's usually done. Usually kimonos are done in very, in panels, very succinct ways. So anyway, it was a creative environment. I was very fortunate to be in this unique space. And um, from there, I really learned how to hone my skills and drawing and um, learning this beautiful technique was discipline for me, very disciplined. And then I learned about color, how to match color. And uh, that was a very good training for me. So really my specialty is about color. I can, I love to communicate with the colors and then you know the meanings of colors and how they are when we wear them and on our environment and and such like that. Um, so then I started to make when I get, came back I started to create uh, one of a kind hand painted silks that I fashioned into one of a kind garments and accessories and also early in my career I would get commissions to. Uh, make special pieces for people's homes. And that would be on canvas and some on, on fabric, on silk. Um, so I work exclusively on silk um, because that's what we learned in, in Japan. And then the dyes that I use now are also only go on silk. Those are the kimono dyes and the brushes, which I still am using traditionally. And so that was a phase that I did for about 30 years. And then I took a break because I, I became ill and then I took care of my parents. And so honestly, all my creativity went kaput <laughs> for a while. <laughs> and um, now I feel so grateful because it's finally coming back and I'm emerging again and recreating my business and using my body of work to reach people in another way now, which I'm very excited about. And my son is helping me uh, do this. And now this opportunity came with you, Bailan, to, to put it out to more, I would say, mainstream mainstream audience and so i'm really grateful for this opportunity to to be here at macy's with you Celebrate. well you know it, it's really beautiful that um that you know we we hear that uh we hear the call we hear the call to our art. We hear the call to our expression or to our purpose or what is it that wants to come out of us. And then we, we answer the call. And then life happens, right? 
I mean, I had, I was caregiver for my mother for the last five years of her life also. And it's true, these things become all encompassing, all consuming. And yet, when we come out the other end, it has enriched us. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so much more available to our art or to our expression. And so I was so happy. I mean, I have enjoyed, I have enjoyed your, your silks for quite some time and every, you know I have several of them I am so lucky to have several of them mm -hmm. and you know they come alive they come alive when you wear them they, they're, they're not just a piece of cloth mm -hmm. and um, you know when when one hears about you know the artist who imbues their spirit in whatever it is they're making I really experience that with your art mm -hmm. Well, thank you. I'm so grateful that you you receive that because that is my intention. And really, the base of my intention with through my art is nature. Mm -hmm. I my biggest inspiration and healer is nature, our Mother Earth, and she provides us for with everything we require in this world and our, our, in this life. And I'm I'm always in awe of nature. She inspires me with her colors her magic, her mystery, uh, the, all the textures. And uh, I mean, every day, I'm just so grateful to, to be able to partake in the beauty that she provides for me to, ins to have inspiration to cre create. And my, my intention is for people to feel that through my work and and you you do you are and people say to me oh I've, there's something I have a um you know a drawer full of scarves but somehow when I wear your scarf I feel so good I'm just like I'm so happy because they're really feeling it and and on top of that silk is a very high frequency um fiber so it, it holds really good positive energy in it so mm. <laughs> thank you Bailan. well i i love that so so did you you how did your art or your connection to um nature was that any part of your healing journey when you were having your own health issues oh absolutely yes uh, when i when i um became ill i would i had to stop <laughs> you know I think I think illness and disease and g even getting a cold it's it's our body's way of saying just slow down and stop and relax and and everything is okay somehow um, our bodies are part of the earth and when we stop and can really be on her and be with her she really is the greatest healer everything all of our healing can i believe come from the earth of course i did i did both modalities i'm not saying anything ab about western medicine or, or alternative i think both of them have a, a very pertinent place in our healing and i'm grateful for both i'm just saying that when we're in nature the ions or you know the everything about it the calm the peace the beauty the love the the holding and the healing um, from mother earth i absolutely believe it holds us and can help us to heal on many many levels and so that is that is also part of the i want to say richness i guess that i that i imbue in and intend to touch people with that hmm. and doing it beautifully mm -hmm. and i um i think you had a series didn't you where, where you actually created according to the different elements yes i had been creating these very huge panels uh 45 mm -hmm. inches by about eight um yards long very huge pieces that that can go in different environments. And they were about the elements. Yes, water, wind, fire, and earth. And 
uh, when they're in a showing or a gallery, they re can really help bring the bring the elements in to your own environment. That is my wish. And, and what we're doing now is we're taking photos of my originals and we're printing them on different kinds of fabrics, something that I've wanted to do for decades. And finally, the technology is here and I've got my son to help me do this and he, because he's so in tune with my senses and sensibility. Um, I feel very, very fortunate and grateful and lucky that he's, he's um, on board to help me with all this. So we're doing that and offering, um, I'm, I'm phasing out of clothing and accessories and we're, going, we're making things for interiors now, um, custom interiors. And then uh, we're putting my, a little capture of my work on hoodies and t-shirts, things that are more fun and wearable. So you can throw them in the washing machine and, and go and um, go out on a walk instead of having to wait to wear my things to some fancy party because that my things that I made before my creations are on silk and they're for special occasions and and you don't do that every day. So I'm, I'm excited about the new direction that we're taking and I'm getting all inspired again. And so I'm really, really thankful that I, my creativity is coming back. And um, even the other day, I, I, I stumbled upon this way to print uh, like flowers and leaves on fabric. So I'm gonna be experimenting with that too. Mm -hmm. the direct you can so it's like endless possibilities so that's exciting oh, oh my happens. goodness that's exciting really bringing the the actual nature and marrying it you know oh, combining oh. it and marrying it oh that's exciting we'd love to see that when that's yeah. when you're ready with that and and so so uh so the new direction you're saying is, is you're including it in wearables like like jackets and hoodies and are you doing scarves and things like that? Well, I've done scarves, I've done jackets and tops and now we're just going to be focusing on casual wear. Okay. T-shirts and hoodies, things you can go to the grocery store and go jogging or whatever. Things that I wear every day. I'm looking for a hoodie myself. Just <laughs> 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 <Kiss> myself. <laughs> Why don't we wear that, make them ourselves? And, and um, I'm working on a couple of designs right now. We're, we're honestly, we just started. So we're running into some, it's a learning curve. Let me put it that way. Um, well, exci it's exciting for us to be on the ground floor, yeah. you know, I, because this is, it's not like you're a brand new artist. You know, you, you this, is, this is like round two. Exactly. round two exactly. and round one was was very successful i mean you your work is is known around the world you know you you have a reputation that is around the world and to to take that hiatus and now to come back you know renewed and in, in a new area i mean uh so are you are you doing things like or are you considering doing things like sheets uh, you know, linens and tablecloths and things Could like be. that. Mm -hmm. Could mm -hmm. be. Could it's, be. It's really, we're starting one thing at a time because I also get so many ideas, just like you're talking about. And I think, oh, we could do this and we could do that. And then my family's like, slow down, mom, do one thing at a time. So we're going to focus on doing like panels um, and, and art pieces for people's homes. I can also take custom work. Um, I love to go into people's homes, get to know them, um, see what they want to bring into their environment. Um, it could be some a piece on the wall, or now we could do some pillows. I'm even thinking they have rugs. You can make rugs. Some of my designs I think would be awesome rugs with matching pillows and curtains. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. <laughs> We're, we're experimenting. Exactly, exactly. So it's I mean, going to be more interior, more product, 
oriented, practical, useful. I, I'm a very pragmatic person that way. So I wanted, I always want to have my art more utilitarian, I guess, if you want, would, um, for lack of a better word, but to, it ought, it ought to be, I mean, I think beauty and art can be imbued everywhere and, and infused into our everyday life. Even the kitchen towel that we, I've thought about making kitchen towels, even with maybe some of my new inspirations that I'm getting, you know? So anything that we use can be beauty and useful and why not? <laughs> why not? So my, my, the most word that people say when they see my work is, oh, it's beautiful. And I love bringing beauty to the world. That's, I know that's part of what, what I'm here to do. Beauty and love. Oh, I, I think they call it merch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you've entered the world of merch. Oh, wow. <laughs> I think it's I think it's great because art is beautiful and in the past it's like okay you had to go to a museum or you had to go to to um, a showing or a gallery you know you had to go to a place and now because of technology we're able to share with the entire world mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the entire world I mean there could be somebody watching you know this right now who is on the other side of the world, we don't know who they are, but they click, I'm on, I'm watching what's happening over at Macy's Union Square. I miss okay. it, I was there, oh, let's see what they're doing. And they see you. They wouldn't have been able to do that before. You know, and so we, so it, it's like we're, we're um, popularizing what used to be available only to the, the you know, the rich, the wealthy, you know, we're making it available so that they can, so that everyone can experience it. Right. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. is part of what, what I would like to do, reach more people with my work, um, spark that in them, their connection with the earth um, and, and in hopes that they will learn it more in themselves because we we could all use more love, self-love, self-care, you know, self-respect. And then I feel that when we are happy and feel beautiful and, and wholesome and satisfied and content within ourselves, and then we, we can respect the earth that way. And naturally we're going to respect other people. And that is my little tiny way of helping to make the world a better place we're all in this together <laughs> there you go so so i have a quick question yes. you know since it is um asian american native hawaiian pacific islander heritage month how do you you know i mean obviously in the way that you learned um your your uh your way of putting the art onto the the fabric that's that's a cultural way that you learn, but how else do you think, if at all, uh, does, your, does your heritage um, play a part in your work? Hmm, that's a good question. I think that even though I really don't think of myself as Japanese, I am though, <laughs> that is my ancestry. And, and then the, I, of course I went back to Japan to learn this intricate technique. And even though now through my own experiments and developing my own ways of painting and using different materials and, and such, I, I, I think that my heritage does come through just naturally of, of who I am, maybe because of my skill or the way that I, my eye or the way that um, my culture comes through. It, my things don't necessarily look Japanese, but I think people can sort of feel that in, in some sense. And, um, 
how can I explain? It's well, I think a lot of the time it's a, it's a connect it's that nature connection is how how you marry nature with uh, everyday life, how you bring it into your everyday living. I, I think that's how I see a lot of people accessing the heritage, right? Um, and as you said, it's the eye. You know, I was when you said that, I thought, oh yeah, it's like look like learning wabi sabi, right? Wabi sabi is Japanese. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Less is more. The other thing is when I was in Japan, you know, I, I'm third generation. Um, my my grandparents came here. My parents were born. So I. You know, I, I had, I was my first time living in Japan as well. And everything there is integrate, art is, and nature are integrated into the culture. The way the food is presented, uh, you know, the way they, they have their homes. I mean, it's, so it, it was a, it's a, it was like an infusion of, of nature, you know, like they'd have bamboo cups and things made out of wood and just the, all these natural things, these little, just these little containers were made, just made beautifully and exquisitely. And the craftsmanship is just impeccable. <laughs> you know, they really are wonderful artists and, and craftsmen and designers as well. And, um, and you brought that to your work. You really have brought that aesthetic to your work. Mm -hmm. And so I, I want to thank you so much for bringing that to Macy's and for bringing it to the world to continue to evolve. Mm -hmm. um, we'll be excited to see what comes next, yeah. um, to see what, you know, what pieces uh, are uh, developed to be offered to, pe to everyone. And um, wow, it's an exciting time. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Bailan. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I'm grateful to you, to all the people at Macy's, to everyone watching this. It's been an honor and a pleasure to be able to share my work, my little part of the world with all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And you're going to be at Macy's um, every weekend this month, right? That's right. Yes, we are so going to be there. I, uh, this weekend, which is the, whatever the weekend is, the, is the 21st and 22nd. So people will be able to actually meet you because mm -hmm. you will be there. You're, you're, you know, as they're watching this, um, you're there, uh, with well, many one, of your one cloths. To four, I think one to four, both days. And also the, the last weekend in Macy's, I think it's the 28th and the 29th, one to four. So yes, yeah, love to meet you all. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. All right. Thank you so much, Kiki. Thank well, um, you. If people want to get in touch with you, where should they find you? Yes, you can look at my website. It's colordance.com. That's C-O-L-O-U-R-D-A-N-C-E.com. It's the European way um, of spelling color dance. And so check that out. You can also email me at contact color dance at gmail.com again that's contact c-o-l-o-u-r d-a-n-c-e at gmail.com and look at our website and you can call us you can um call us for any inquiries or email us we'd be happy to help you wonderful thank you keiki Thank you again. Okay, see you soon. See you soon. Much love. Bye-bye.